What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're going to be talking about a topic that you have requested quite a lot lately and that is plumbing for a simple bathroom. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm going to be showing you how to set up the plumbing just for a simple bathroom, how to connect everything up and just make everything work. Uh, now if you want to learn more about plumbing in Revit, I have actually created quite a complex course that covers pretty much everything that you need to know about plumbing in Revit. It's available on my website balkanarchitect.com and it's going to be the first link just below the video in the description. So make sure to check it out if you want to learn plumbing in depth, step by step, all of the tools explained slowly. Uh, so if you're interested, check that out. Also before we start, make sure to like this video, it helps me out a lot and it helps share the video to other users uh, that might want to see it. And finally make sure to subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week and it makes sense not to miss them. So <laughs> make sure to subscribe. Anyways, without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's get started by going here to models, then going to new. And for the template file, I'm actually going to go with my architecture design template. Now I know what you might be thinking, doesn't it make more sense uh, to go with some sort of a plumbing template? And yes, it does. Uh, but before we can go to plumbing, we have to create an architecture model that's going to include our bathroom and all of the fixtures in that bathroom. And then we can connect those uh, with our plumbing systems. So I'm just going to use my architecture design template. Uh, now, if you're interested in checking out my templates, you can find them both on my website, balkanarchitect.com. That's going to be the third link in the description. So check that out if you're interested. Anyways, let's just click OK and let's let Revit start right up. So as soon as Revit starts up, I'm simply going to go here into the level one floor plan and let's just create a simple uh, room for our bathroom. So I'm simply going to go here to the wall tool and I'm going to choose this interior bearing wall just because it has a little bit of thickness to that. Uh, I'm going to go to the rectangle tool and then let's create a simple rectangle like so. Also, it makes sense to add some sort of a floor. So let's go to the floor tool and then here for the floor type, I'm just going to use the interior tile floor and I'm going to use the uh, rectangle tool again and create a simple rectangle like so. Hit finish and as you can see, we have those nice tiles. Okay, now it's time to start inserting some plumbing fixtures. Uh, now for the plumbing fixtures, what I'm going to be using is going to be the uh, Pro BIM project uh, plugin uh, that, well, it's a uh, cloud-based uh, library where you can access uh, families straight from the manufacturers. These are really nice uh, quality families and uh, the reason why I especially like them is because uh, they do include all of the necessary connectors uh, for the plumbing families. Now don't worry, if you don't know what connectors are, you are going to learn in this video, uh, but it is something that's quite important for uh, setting up the plumbing. And these uh, plumbing families that we have here actually all have those important connectors. Uh, now, uh, if you're interested in getting this plugin and having access to all of these families, it's completely free and I'm just going to be leaving a link in the description just below the video. So uh, check it out if you're interested. There's uh, quite a bit of uh, nice families to find. Anyways, I'm going to go straight here to showers. Let's start off with a simple shower. Let's see, this one looks kind of nice and elegant. Uh, so uh, here you have the option to kind of request properties and play around with the dimensions. I'm very happy with this one, so I'm just going to select that one and go to add to project. Now, as soon as I click that, we have the option to create this family or to load this family. Now, only modification that I'm going to be making uh, is going to be here to perhaps shorten the name a little bit. I'm annoyed when I have a long name. <laughs> so that's what, what I'm going to change. And then here you can choose uh, which parameters you want to include and which you don't want to include. So uh, if you if you want to kind of uh, not have some uh, parameters loaded in at this stage, you can just check them off. And then obviously at any point later on, you can add them back in. Anyways, I'm just going to click continue and that's going to add this shower stall to my project. So we just have to wait for a few seconds for that uh, family to load in to be 
well, download it from the cloud and load it into our Revit project. Uh, now here it is. Uh, I'm just going to hit the space key and place it here in this corner. Click just like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times. And then uh, here below, I'm just going to change the detail level to fine. And now we can see, yeah, there we go. We have that shower stall. And remember that I said that the connectors are important. These are the connectors. See, it says create pipe. So it has the ability to uh, attach a 15 millimeter pipe. Uh, a sanitary pipe and that's why these families are so important. Okay, let's move forward. I want to add some more elements. So the next one is going to be the wash basin. So let's see, let's search for something that's going to look nice. Perhaps I'm going to use not that one. But this one seems elegant enough. So let's go to add to project. Again, it's going to give us all of the parameters that are available. You can check them on or off as you will or as you wish. <laughs> and let's let it load in as well. It's really good to have kind of access to this library, even though the families aren't loaded in, you can just load them in real quickly. So I'm just going to place that here. And yeah, let's just place it like so the escape key a couple of times and then also make sure to select it and uh, give it a proper elevation so I'm just going to place it at 90 centimeters and I do suggest you always go to the default 3d view just to double check what everything looks like in 3d because sometimes it might look good in a floor plan but then when you go to 3d it looks well off uh, also for this, uh, now uh, for this sink, you can see that here we have a uh, pipe for the sanitary pipe, a 15 millimeter out, but we do have to have some sort of a in for the faucet, both cold and hot water. So we have to include the faucet as well. So let me go back here, uh, find faucets. And as you can see, we have many different choices. I'm just going to go with something quite simple and elegant. I like this one, add to project. So let's add that one in as well. Okay, here you can see the faucet. Now I'm just going to place it uh, like this on the ground and then let me select it and give it that 90 centimeter offset. And then we can just go to the floor plan view to set it up in the correct place. And here you can see that we have that cold and hot water in. So that's why the faucet was so important. Uh, also moving forward, let's add the uh, toilet. So I'm going to add this one, just include that one in the project as well. And here I'm going to place it on this wall just like so, select it. And then for the elevation or the offset, I'm going to add for the uh, centimeters. And if I go to the 3D view, yeah, this is what that looks like. And also, as you can see, it has the 100 millimeter out and a 15 millimeter in for those uh, connectors. So that's important as well. And finally, for the shower, we need some sort of a uh, in for the shower, some sort of a connector there. So for that, I'm going to go here to shower systems. And I'm going to choose one of these, for example, this one add to project and let's continue and add that one as well. And once it's loaded in, let's place it here. Uh, let's give it an elevation of, oh, let's go with 90 as well. And then finally here in level one, we should probably attach it to the wall. Again, go to the 3D view just to double check. Here in level one, I think it's a little bit, oops, uh, I think it's a little bit off. So I'm going to try to kind of attach it there just to make it centered. And there we go. So for this one, again, we have the ins, we have the out for the shower. So now that our bathroom is pretty much complete, I'm just going to make it a little bit shorter, like so, go into a level one, and perhaps let's add a door there. That would be nice. So let's uh, add just a simple door here. I'm going to go with an 80 centimeter door just like so. So there we go. Our uh, little bathroom is now uh, completed and now we can start playing around with plumbing. And now it's time to model the actual plumbing. So what I'm going to do is go here to models and then go to you. And in this case, I'm just going to be using the default plumbing template that comes with Revit, uh, just because it has some of the settings and the piping and uh, routing preferences and all of that, uh, which is quite useful to, to get started. And I talk uh, a lot more about this in the actual plumbing course. Uh, now we have to load in our architectural model. So you want to go here to the insert tab 
and then you want to go to link Revit and I have it here on my desktop here we have the bathroom for plumbing I'm just going to hit open and it's going to open that up uh, now here you'll notice that only the plumbing fixture will appear with regular uh, dark black lines everything else will be grayed out uh, now, uh, a problem that we do have here is uh, if we want to select one of these items, we have to use the tab key first, and then even when we select, remember those connectors that I was showing you? Well, they don't appear here. Uh, the reason for that is this is still part of the linked model, so it doesn't appear. Uh, but what you can do to kind of override that is uh, just come in here and select all of these uh, plumbing items that we need. So I'm just going to hover over the... the, the, the the water closet here uh, right click or sorry uh, use the tab key to highlight it hold the control key to add the selection and just repeat that process for the rest of these items uh, don't forget the faucet because it's important as well uh, now once you select all of these what you want to do next is go to the clipboard uh, copy that to clipboard go to paste and then just align it at the same place click OK and now once it's done, if I select the, the sink here, uh, you will see that now we have that connector and that's exactly what we want to see. Okay, now it's time to, well, actually get started connecting everything. Uh, so I like to do the plumbing first and then the sanitary system uh, later. So let me select first the uh, faucet here, go to the hot water, for example. And then if I want to pull it out like this and if I click, it's going to say that it cannot be done. Uh, now the reason for that is because this particular faucet wants that to be connected below, so it wants a vertical pipe. So once, what you want to do is just go here to the middle elevation and set it to something lower, like 800 millimeters, and now when it goes down it can be done. Now we want to go into the wall a little bit, perhaps like that, and then I'm just going to go off to the side here, just like so. Now, once we have that, uh, I want to connect my shower to that same hot water pipe. So for that, what we can do is go here to the uh, floor plan view, select that shower. Let's see. There we go. Go to the hot water. And if I just connect it like this, it's immediately going to create that solution. See how it kind of added all of the, the all of the elements there. And now if I go perhaps here to find level of detail, now as you can see, it's showing everything that it requires. Uh, now, if these pipes are a bit thin, you can always go here and change the diameter. So if I see this pipe is 25, I can perhaps set this pipe to 25 as well. Now, as you can see, it connects properly. And then we can use a thin pipe for this one. Okay, moving forward, let's do the second one. So the cold water one. Again, uh, let's change the middle elevation to something like, let's go to 700 for this one. Again, go out a little bit, but a little bit less, like so. And then go off to here, just like so. There we go. I like doing things in 3D uh, because, well, Revit has that power and I think it's uh, useful to utilize that, utilize that because, well, uh, uh, all, all of this plumbing uh, is a lot easier to understand when you're working in 3D. Uh, anyways, uh, let us go back now into the floor plan view. Again, select the uh, shower column, uh, go here to the cold water in, and then just connect here. And again, it's just going to do the same thing. Uh, again, we have a problem where this is thicker than this pipe here. So let's just uh, make this one bigger, just like so. Perfect and then it just continues off. Uh, now here we want to connect the, the water closet as well. So for that, perhaps it makes sense to go again to the floor plan view, go to the in, oops, let's see, let's try that again. Okay, yeah, we want the cold water connector. There we go, connect. And this is what that does. So it connects it like this. Now here, I think again, this is thicker. Yeah, this one's 15. So we can increase this to 15. So there we go. So the pipe goes from 25 to 15 and then finally to 10. Uh, that's probably what it would look like in real life. Okay, so we've managed to get the water to our, uh, to our fixtures. Now it's time to take the water away by adding the sanitary system. So I like to start off with the water closet. So let's go here to the out 
And then imp really important here, you want to go to the piping and go to slope down. So make sure that the pipes slope down. Uh, I'm going to use the slope of two degrees and then go into the wall, obviously. And then we can just go down a little bit. So let's go to the middle elevation here and set this to minus 100 like so, and then go all the way out. Perfect. See? Okay, now let's connect the shower. So the shower we can connect. Uh, what I like to do is I like to see where that shower is. So for example, if I go here to this should be, uh, let's see. Okay, that should be this elevation. Okay, zoom in. And then you see the pipe here. So I like to go to the measure tool and measure from the center of the shower. Is this the shower? No. Okay, so from the center of the shower to here. So that's uh, 120 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is go here to the 3D view. Or no, let's go to the floor plan view, select the shower, and then we have this out. And then let's go down to minus 110, perhaps. And then you want to connect it. Now, if it doesn't connect immediately, uh, the problem is we don't see it. Okay, it did connect. There we go. Perfect. But it kind of went through. We don't want that. So let's go one step back. Let's see. So the problem is we cannot really see this pipe in the floor plan view. So in order to uh, avoid that, <laughs> we want to see it. What we need to do is go here to the properties panel and then go to view range, go to edit and just set it to unlimited at the bottom and also at the view depth. Hit apply. Okay. And also let's switch this to final level of detail. There we go. And now finally, when we select the shower, we go to out again, we set that to minus, let's go minus 110. And then we just attach it like so. Perfect. Go to the 3D view. This is what that looks like. See, uh, that's why we've measured. So we, we can attach it at the similar elevation. That's what we want. Uh, it was 120, but we went to 110. Then uh, just to give it a little bit more room for slope here. And then finally, you want to attach this as well. So what I'm going to do is just select this pipe and extend it up. And it's just going to continue that slope. Now, a problem that arises here is the fact that this now goes kind of like a bend and it shouldn't be a bend. It should be a T. So you just delete that and then you just extend this down and you solve that problem. So uh, for planning in Revit, you'll see there is a lot of this little back and forth to kind of connect everything, but in the end, everything works out. Uh, finally, let's go to this out. Uh, we can go to the fl floor plan view, go to that out. Uh, the middle elevation is 700 here, so let's bring that down to four. Oops, not 4,000, but 400. There we go. And then you can just go out like that, hit the escape key a couple of times. And then what I like to do is go to the modify tab and simply use trim and extend to connect these two. And this is what we get in the end. Uh, now, obviously, this isn't going to work for each uh, bathroom. And you're probably going to have some rules, regulations, preferences, and so on. And that's why I created that course where I can, can go in depth uh, for hours and explain all of the possibilities and all of the methods that you can use in order to well, get everything not only to work, but to correspond to your regulation and also to kind of work with the design. Uh, but this was kind of a quick demonstration of how to connect all of the items on a simple bathroom such as we have over here. Uh, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you have learned something new. As I said, please check out the course. It will be the first link in the description. Uh, check out uh, my Patreon page. That will be the second link in the description. And also, if you want to check out the uh, BIM uh, project, uh, dot cloud. Uh, check that out as well. It's a free plugin. It allows you to use all of these useful families. So that link will be included in the description as well. Okay, so without any <laughs> thing else to do, uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to comment, like and share this video. Make sure to subscribe and I'll be back with another Balkan architect tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.